Welcome back, guys, to the Beyond Condition podcast. Today, we have a bonus episode, and it is a solo edition. And we're going to be talking about food plans and macro tracking. Now, of course, really, the best route for you when it comes to tracking your nutrition is the option that you can adhere to. Over time, for sure, when we look at how we're going to track our nutrition, it may be that you choose different methods depending on the different phases you are in as a bodybuilder and or competitor. And it may be that you're a bit more flexible in certain phases. And over time, we can build up our own knowledge and experience with different tracking methods. And that's going to range from when you first start out to what you already know, to when maybe you're a good few years into this journey and how you like to approach your nutrition. And what I want to talk about in this episode is some of the things that are going to contribute to how you like to monitor your nutrition, some of the thoughts and feelings that you may have towards the different ways of monitoring everything that you do in the different phases, and also how you're going to build up your own education. I would also like to talk about the influence of social media and the external pressures and inputs we can all have that will contribute into how we feel about food. And if you do have a coach, every coach has different ways that they're going to implement ways to monitor your nutrition, right? So when you take on a coach, it's important to have a conversation in regards to if you have certain thoughts, feelings, ideas in your mind about how you would like to do this, that it's explored. Because some coaches may offer food plans only. Some coaches may also only offer macros. And it's important for you to know where you stand when you are looking to work with a coach. So a bit of a background for myself. When I first got into having a coach and properly committing to being a competitor, the coach that I had for near on eight years, it was always macro tracking. So actually for myself, other than what I dabbled in beforehand, that's all I ever knew. And I essentially got set macro targets, including a fiber target. And then I would input that in my fitness pal and essentially create my own food plan within a flexible dieting approach. Now, as I mentioned there beforehand, I had tried different food plans, but that was always by myself and inputting onto a good old spreadsheet all those moons ago. And I remember, you know, when I first started looking at this and I did my first PT course, it was the baseline of what each macronutrient is. And some of you will relate to this if you've done training in, you know, your level two, your level three, that it's just a bit of a, a baseline understanding. And then it's for us to explore this more and understand more. Now for myself, I'm always, always keen to learn. And what I found is straight away, I started to make spreadsheets. I started to make food plans and I would put the foods in the food plan on the spreadsheet have all the auto sum calculations and I started to learn what different foods had different macronutrients and through that time I tried keto for six weeks which was really really tough in regards to this was sort of the first food plan I followed and of course we're eliminating certain foods it is restrictive and it was like whoa you know this is it felt like a big, a new level of commitment to monitoring my food. And actually, I found through doing a true keto diet, for me, it didn't end up feeling so good. And it wasn't the route I wanted to take. So that left me with like, okay, so where do I go from here? And when I went to the gym, I had a good friend there, and we both were starting to get into bodybuilding. And I started to formulate different food plans, how that would look with different foods and different macronutrients. So as I said, then I went into working with a coach and that was Stephen. And 
I will always, always remember every week I had to fill in my spreadsheet. So like I say, back in the day, you know, every day filling out what macros you'd hit and doing that myself through my fitness pal, I hit the macronutrient targets bang on the letter. And it actually, for me, unleashed a neuroticism to get the bang on targets. So whatever my targets were at the time, they were exact in my tracking methods. And that for myself, for sure, unleashed this neuroticism, but it also unleashed something in me that I guess proved to myself that I could do this to the nth degree, and I felt happy doing that. And a lot of you that listen, I'm sure, are going to be an all or nothing approach. And that does, that is something that is associated with bodybuilders. We like control, we like structure. And for me, hitting those targets bang on is not a problem. If I'm set macronutrient targets, I'm set targets. And this is where you will hear this on the podcast. If you are in this and you really want to get everything nailed and bang on, then there's going to be certain people listening that go, yeah, I hear you. I understand, you know, I do not want to leave anything to chance. And actually at points of my journey with Stephen, at one point in particular, he pulled me up on it and he said, there's absolutely no way you can get these macros bang on every single week because there was an allowance of five grams either side in a diet and 10 grams either side of each macronutrient target in an off season. And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, I've never had a client that has been able to track to the absolute number of the target day in, day out for consecutive weeks, months and years. And there was points in off season where he would challenge me to go, OK, let's go over your macros or under your macros. Then I started to get into different thought processes and methods of control where actually what I would do and this is where he then again pulled me up. If I went over on my protein target, so say by five grams, so if it was 170 gram macro target for protein and I went to 175, what I would then do is <laughs> test the system, I guess, but I would then go under on my carbohydrates by five. And because the same calories are yielded through protein and carbs, I'd then still be hitting the exact calories, but still exploring going under or over certain macro targets. And then he pulled me up again. No, I don't want you to borrow one and substitute the other. I want you to go over or under and allow yourself that 10 gram allowance and explore how that feels to come away from so much control and neuroticism over my food. Now, for me, again, you might relate here, guys. It felt like I don't understand why I wouldn't want to hit things exact. And I thought that was a good thing, you know, and I always felt like it was almost like a badge of honor that I could do that. And I got off on it and I still get off on being able to do certain things as a bodybuilder because it's not a problem for me to stick to a plan 100 and 50 percent. Um, I'm exaggerating there. But, you know, I want to hit my targets as bang on as possible. But as he had picked up, and this is where the emotional attachment can come in here, guys, is that I was institutionalizing myself by these numbers. And when I say I was in the matrix every day, for sure I was. And that was for years and years and years. Everything was absolutely bang on because I don't see another way to do bodybuilding. And at that time, it was like, I'm so I'm so focused on these numbers that it would be very hard for me not to hit the numbers. Now, as you will pick up on the podcast, this is very much me. I don't have a problem sticking to the bodybuilding lifestyle. I absolutely love it. And what I said there, right, I was imprisoned by these numbers, so focused on these numbers. And over time, I've been able to understand why Stephen got me to explore the different ranges and be able to not be so rigid in different phases. 
So this is where, again, like I said at the start, it might be that you're more flexible in different phases as a bodybuilder. Because in prep, in my mind, we are robotic. We are hitting targets and there's no room to slip up here. That's me personally. You know, I have never hands down cheated on my diet. And that is the God's honest truth. And that for me was never an option. Now, like I said, when I got into bodybuilding, this unleashed some new level of control for myself. And actually over time that did, that did start to, I guess, when I reflect back, wear on me mentally, because all day, every day, I'm thinking, have I hit my targets? What do I need to push and pull to hit these targets? And I have a joke when I say this, but if I need to cut a green bean in half, whatever I need to do, I would do it. But when that spans across years, that does take its toll. And what I'm now able to do is reflect back and go, okay, so I understand that more that there can be flexibility in the different phases, because what that can lead to is a bit of a warped relationship with food, because you are always eating for a purpose, generally speaking, as a bodybuilder. But what that can do is build a, a fear of food and being able to embrace off plan. And that's certainly something that, yeah, okay, right, we want to hit these targets in all the phases, but we are still human. And that's what I certainly forgot as I was moving through my bodybuilding journey. And then when I got to off plan situations, it was very scary. And I always say this to my clients, and this was always for my own thought processes. If I'm told I can have off plan, I would have guidelines there, but I personally feel, and like I say, I say this to my clients, that if you've been told you can have off plan, that is still in your plan. And this is where it can become a bit of a confusion because it's like, so it's called off plan, but that's still in the plan. That doesn't make sense. But this is where we start to rewrite how we view different phases and different thought processes around having off plan foods, because then we are in danger of potentially when it comes to off plan, if we don't follow guidelines, if we don't communicate with our coach, if we literally do whatever the fuck we want, that can lead to, of course, potential binge type episodes, a lot of backlash on your GI, a backlash on your training, your energy, your general well-being and performance. And that backlash does over time cause potential sensitivities, mild intolerances for your gut, maybe even worse than that. We can end up having, of course, these thought processes linked to certain foods and certain memories and certain off-plan occasions. And there's a whole realm of different things that can occur if we feel like off-plan is just balls to the walls, fuck it, I'm going to have exactly what I want. It's not, it's not, I, and I will repeat that, it's not me saying you shouldn't have off plan and enjoy different foods. What it is, is me saying, if you're a bodybuilder and or competitor, generally speaking, off plan is going to be there for a reason. And that could be a multitude of things. And having elements of control and some guidelines in place can really help for off plan to become more of an enjoyable experience, being able to facilitate you really immersing in having some nice food rather than you feeling like you're counting down the days to off plan and then it's the fuck it button. Because more often than not, as bodybuilders, we can then be led into, I shouldn't have eaten X or do I need to do extra cardio? Do I need to spend time in the gym? Do I need to be there longer than I normally do? How do I get back those calories that I've eaten? And you can see how this cycle starts to develop where we can end up being in these binge restrict type cycles. Now, what I would say is, guys, if you are getting into bodybuilding, perhaps this is your first stint at it. 
and you're, you know, fairly far in, whatever method you use for tracking and whatever your thought processes are towards after your first show, it's super, super important in my mind that we do facilitate having support in this period of time. Now, I say first time, this transfers personally across, even if you've done this for years, to have support after your show and in that period of time. And it's well known, right, that we have a meal out after the show. We maybe have a couple of days where we have some foods and we eat some foods we haven't had in a prep. But then in my mind, it's very, very important that we get back to structure and a method of tracking. And that may change from what you did in your prep. So there's a bit of background in regards to some of the things I'm going to talk about today, but also what I did for the majority of working with my first coach, Stephen, for sort of nearly eight years. Some of the things that occurred for me and some of the thought processes that I now have when I reflect and look back on my journey. Now, when I went into working with Tom, it was always still flexible dieting and I've always hit macro targets. But what we did was as I moved through my last prep, I was macro tracking, but I created a food plan, particularly as I get into the depths of prep, having a food plan on my fitness pal. So it's almost like a, a mix of the two. I would have the macro targets. I lay out my fitness pal and then I have a food plan to rinse and repeat each day. Then when there was a macro change, I would do that in my fitness pal, again, creating my own food plan within a macro target. And this is where I say, guys, this was after, you know, 10 years, right, of doing this. And I'm able to, and of course, I'm a coach as well. And I have that on top of being a competitor. I'm able to formulate a food plan where I'm still looking at micronutrients. I'm still able to hit the macro targets, try and hit a good fiber target. Our bait, of course, <laughs> it gets much harder as you start to gravitate to eating not very much food, but I'm able to do that. I'm also able to construct a food plan that preferences when I would want the set macros throughout a day, how I want to prioritize my gym sessions and fuel around that, and how I want to utilize my food around bedtime to facilitate a good sleep, how that all works out over a day. A lot of us will have a coach that looks at that for us. So this can be, and we're going to talk about food plans first as a method, a food plan can be an ideal way to, one, if you don't have the nutrition knowledge there, and that might not even be, you know, you could be years into this, or it might not even be that it's your first time. However, having a food plan created for you by your coach, if your coach knows about nutrition, which hopefully they do, they're able to formulate a food plan that is constructed to preference training performance, to preference a good profile of different foods within that. Hopefully a good profile of micronutrients as well and be able to hit as many of those targets as you can as you move through the different phases. Now, as I touched on there and I, I laugh nervously as you move through a prep, guys, our micronutrient profile and our variety of foods is going to decrease because, of course, we're heading into a deficit further and further over time. And to do that, we are ultimately removing foods. So it becomes harder to hit profiles within your food intakes per day. But depending on who your coach is, and obviously, you know, every coach has a lot of different ways they're going to do these things. But I personally, I like to keep a good micronutrient profile across all phases and that is prep as well and there comes a point where I will discuss this with my clients when we're in a diet phase where we are going into less fiber less micronutrients and then we start to almost go over it's almost like we go over the bridge into no man's land when we're heading into a deeper deficit because 
we then can't prioritize health as the big, big focus if we're facilitating a large deficit. And this is where the sport is often labeled as extreme because it's not just what we're doing in the gym. It's not just if you're using PEDs, all of that considered. You are, of course, limiting the food you have to a high degree. And that is not a normal way to live. And it is, of course, for bodybuilders, it feels quite normal, right? Like, I don't have a problem with what needs to happen in a prep for the outcome of stepping on stage. And I know a lot of you will resonate with that. It's like, I'll do whatever it fucking takes. It doesn't matter, you know, for me, this is what needs to be done in prep. I'm stepping on that stage knowing I've done whatever it takes to get there. And Again, you know, you're going to see different mindsets here, guys. But if you're looking to do this, if you're looking to push a large deficit, if you're looking to get pretty lean, we can't have health as the main focus at all times. The way I like to frame it by including micronutrients, by utilizing supplementation, by being as smart as we can for as long as we can is that we are doing this in the healthiest in and out comma healthiest way possible and we do this over time then we have the stage and then we bring the athlete out and start to repopulate the foods we're going to use now you can see by using a food plan from a coaching standpoint i know that if i create any of my clients a food plan, I'm looking at hitting micronutrient profiles, I'm hitting macro targets, I'm able to suggest times we would eat around the training window before bed, all the different things we're doing. If we're utilizing certain compounds, eating around using the compounds for what we want them to do. As an example, if we're using stimulants, and we're doing a period in the morning of fasted steps, gym, whatever it may be, Meal one, what does that look like? Okay, what do we want to utilize here? When is training if it's not going to be in that fasted window? All of these things, I am there as a coach. I'm there to do that. That's my job, right? So I'm there to go, this is the daily structure. These are the foods I'm going to recommend for this phase. This is what I'd like you to follow. I then know as a coach what my clients are eating, what their goal is, and what's going to facilitate us reaching that goal with the best options we have around nutrition. Now, when you look at this from a client standpoint, wherever you are on your journey, if you don't have the experience to consider all of these things I'm talking about, then it would make sense, right, to utilize your coach to be able to construct a food plan. It also, of course, is easier for you, right? Because you're given a plan, you eat the food, done, right? So each day you're eating the food on the flu plan and all is well. And again, you know, there are different, I'm going to talk about this, but there's different ways we can look at that because yes, it's easier. Maybe you're a busy individual. Maybe you don't have the knowledge and experience. Maybe you prefer to just be given a plan and you don't want to plan it out. So in those scenarios, it's a very good way for you to be able to jump on a food plan, do the do, and execute the plan as outlined. However, what we then can find, and I have had this with many clients, if you're used to a food plan and you've never explored hitting macro targets, you've always had a food plan through all the different phases, it can be quite hard for you as an individual to be able to embrace even looking at macro targets or, as I've mentioned, considering things like off plan, it can become a very robotic way of life. And this is where I believe that at times as a bodybuilder, particularly as a competitor, there are going to be times where a food plan for sure is going to be your best option. And like I said, even though I hit macro targets, 10 years in, I'm still making a food plan with those macro targets because I know how I can get the best bang for my buck 
with the targets by creating my own food plan. So there are many, many pluses to both options. And as I said, as I introed it, what can you adhere to, right? And if utilizing a food plan all year round, how does that sit with you if there's periods of time when you maybe go on holiday? Maybe you have a social occasion. In off season, is there things that you're gonna be getting up to that then you're so scared of coming away from a food plan, you're so institutionalized by that, does that then over time have a knock-on effect to your mental health and your relationship with food? And that's a question only you can answer. And for sure, what I will say is, I didn't realize how transfixed I was on food and how skewed my relationship was with myself and food and how I had to hit the targets bang on at all times, how that wore me down over time until essentially, and I've spoken about this on my individual pods before, I pretty much hit rock bottom and I didn't see a way out initially. I literally lived by the matrix of my fitness pal and hitting targets. And the thought, and this is where it came from when I first realized of going on a holiday, to go on a holiday for my birthday and, and enjoy time with Matt and have a good break. It scared me so much that I essentially had a breakdown on the plane and it was terrible. You know, it was so, so hard because I suddenly let out all of this anxiety, emotion, stress that I had felt for so many years around food. And at this point, it would have been over 10 years of doing this and not realizing. And I've had to work on myself. I've had to work on my own relationship with food to be able to be more And when I say flexible, guys, I'm not saying flexible, I don't give a fuck. I'm saying I can have different sources for my macronutrients, not sources like mayo and ketchup, guys, but I can have different meats, I can have different fish, I can have different veggies, I can have different fruits, and it doesn't freak me out. Now, right now, I'm not in a prep. And let's make that clear. If I'm in a prep, there is absolutely a plan in place and that is being followed. What I would add as well, what I found by doing it the way I did was that, and this is something that I can teach clients and that clients do, is that if I go to the store, right, and on my food plan, there's strawberries, there's no strawberries for whatever reason. I know I can go in my fitness pal, I've got my food plan in there, right, okay, I'll have raspberries today swap them out for the same amount of macronutrients, cool. And then I can crack on with being able to still facilitate making a slight change there if I cannot get the food that is in my food plan for that day. So that's the only thing I would say in a prep that I would be able to facilitate within myself without thinking, oh my God, you know, I've deviated from my plan. The whole world has ended because I can literally make that easy swap. But in a prep, as I've said, I don't see there is room for error. And I also don't see that if you are in this to do your absolute best with ambitions that are high, that there is room for fucking around essentially. And this is gonna be different for different coaches, for different clients, for different people but we all have our own way of operating. For me, I don't feel that I would want a client to feel so in a spot where they, they don't know what I'm why I'm getting them to do certain things. They don't understand the food plan. They're limited to, you know, if, if I can't get the strawberries, shit, what do I do? I want to give those tools give those options, have a clear outline of what we do there in those scenarios and offer that education. If we are institutionalized by a food plan and we have to eat every single food on that food plan to the letter, but then we can't get access to a certain food, 
I believe there should always be that education and option to switch out that food for matching the macros and close to the micronutrient profile there. So that's just some thought processes around food plans. Now, when you then gravitate into an off season, a reverse out, it may be that you start to incorporate more flexibility and maybe as an athlete, you do a food plan in a prep and then you flex the diet through your off season and your reverse out and the different phases that come after prep. And I would certainly say that's a good method for a lot of people. Now, this is also going to depend on yourself, right? If you have entered bodybuilding, you've from the word go been on a food plan. I'm going to guess that the potential to come away from a food plan could freak you the fuck out because why wouldn't it, right? You've got into bodybuilding, you've committed to a prep, you've been given a food plan, which could be for four, five, six plus months. The four of monitoring your own food could absolutely blow your mind. So it may be that you stick to a food plan in your off season also. What I like to do with clients, if we're in this scenario, perhaps they've worked with a previous coach, perhaps all they've ever known is food plans. What I like to do is graduate this over time if the client would like to be able to get to a point where they know what to do with macronutrient targets. Now, it's my job to facilitate education, to facilitate listening to my clients, to understand what they would like to achieve over the multiple phases and to come together to be able to work out the best route for them. I personally believe, like I say, it's my job to listen and work with the client to either give enough knowledge and education for them to be able to use macronutrient targets to make a food plan that fits their lifestyle and to make that food plan around the goal so that, as I've spoken about, we can look at micronutrient targets, hitting the macros, being able to add variety to the diet, the list goes on. And whatever method we do, that's a communication between me and the client. I also want to know, and this is something for you to consider, whatever method you believe is the right method for you, and this is something you can do yourself, why do you think that that is the method you would go with? Why is it that you want to follow a food plan? Why is it that you want to macro track? Look back at your relationship with food, what methods you've used before, what you consume, what you believe is the best way to monitor your nutrition, understand why, and in my personal opinion, have a conversation with your coach about this. Now, if that's not available, if your coach said, and this is what I've said to check, we only do plans or we only do macros, if you enter into that contract with a coach, you're going to need to follow their methods. And that's important to remember, right? Because some coaches will only offer one or the other or different ones in different phases. Maybe they offer education, maybe they don't. That's for you to check. But it's important to understand what your past relationship with food is and what is it that draws you to a certain method. because. You understanding yourself, your preferences, your belief system is going to help you as a bodybuilder. Because I've said this before, right? If and when you want to come away from competing, if you're a competitor, if, and that could be for a space of time or that could be forever. So retiring, stepping away from the stage for a while, maybe you get injured and you cannot compete for an X amount of time maybe a personal circumstance occurs. All of those things, a big thing that I believe we need to think about as people, as bodybuilders, is what happens if you are taken out of the method of tracking you are using for a period of time if something happens? And that's something I like to think about myself because imagine the scenario, guys, if 
you suddenly get injured and you need surgery, if something happens to a family member and you've got to travel across the globe, whatever that looks like, if and when you retire, if you want to just step away for a bit, how are you going to feel about food when you come out of a prep scenario or even a pretty structured off season? Have you got the tools and the education to be able to live as a bodybuilder if you need to adapt in certain scenarios? And that's something, like I say, I think about, and it's something I want to arm my clients with. Are we able to exhibit control in certain scenarios? Are we of a nature where we do hit the fuck it button and it's something we need to work on? Do we have emotional attachments to certain foods? Why is that? Is it something we want to work on? All of these things are important. Now, right now, you may not want to look at these things. Maybe it's not that important to you. But as we know on my solo podcast, it's for me to share my reflections and thought provoke for you. Because I personally feel that's important. And I know you guys listening, a lot of you, that you do value these rambles and these episodes where you can actually listen and go, hmm, what what do I get from that? You know, what are those thought processes that maybe I can think about? Now, what I would want you to also think about, guys, is if you've done preps before, if you have visited the post-show period, which is going to look different for all of us, is there lessons you can personally take from this period of time? Are there things that when you compete again and into this period of time that you would like to work on yourself? Would it be better for you to have a food plan after that post-show one, two, three days that you have? Would it be better to have structure sooner than you did before? Do you know that after your show, you do hit the fuck it button and you regret it? Are there any things that you can pick up on from previous times that you can learn from? And could it be an idea to actually have a plan across those phases? And then my example of graduating over time into utilizing macro targets. So it might be that there's a food plan in prep, there's a food plan in the reverse out, and that first portion of the health phase or whatever that looks like for you. And then do you start to have macro targets for one meal a day and the rest of the day you're on your food plan? Do you then look at, okay, I'm going to have two meals a day that are macro tracked for set macros that your coach sets you. And then you have your other meals on a food plan. And you can graduate that over time if you are looking to learn about nutrition, if you're looking to enter the matrix of my fitness power chronometer or whatever tracking tool you use, if you would like to incorporate some flexibility and not eat the same foods every day. That is for sure a really nice journey to take with a coach. And I know from a, a coach satisfaction standpoint, it's a marvelous feeling when someone's been used to a food plan for potentially years, and then we can get to a point where actually they're incorporating different varieties of food by using macro targets and planning themselves. What I would also say with the flexible dieting approach, and this again is going to depend on your coach because it's super important to remember that guys, you know, I'm talking about my methods, my personal experience, my clients, but this is something that I like to think about when it comes to, and this is lifestyle and competing, when it comes to incorporating different foods for a flexible dieting approach. So if you are like the label of this episode, a macro man, there's certainly elements of freedom around what we can do if particularly I would say for a client, if they have multiple social occasions and that's more than maybe your one off plan a week, which is, you know, depending on, again, your coach, we can often see that a lot of athletes in off season will have one off plan a week, or maybe it's more, maybe it's not that much. However, 
what we can do with my fitness power and this depends again on what you're looking to facilitate what you want to do if you are at a point where it's useful to be as bang on as possible what you can do is utilize macro tracking and an app like my fitness pal to input meals out in your macro targets so to do this a lot of the restaurants a lot of the different places we can go in the uk i can't talk for everywhere abroad because of course i'm in the uk and in thailand i didn't i didn't have the thai cuisine so i can't reference that however i digress when we go for a meal out if you're still hitting your macro targets and it's not a quote unquote off plan where you're eating with guidelines but you're not tracking what you can do again this could be part of a graduated response and your own learning of nutrition you can search restaurants on my fitness pal you can enter foods so say you go to wagamama's you can search on my fitness pal wagamama's and whatever the food the dish you're going to have and you can input that in my fitness pal that then allows you to still track that day if you're not quite ready to have off plan that you don't track and it's something i utilize for years because it was quite scary to go off plan off plan so i was able to go to nando's go to wagamama's go to different restaurants and input their dishes into my fitness pal and still hit my targets what i would say as a heads up here guys is when you eat out you're not in control of the cooking of the food and the exact targets that they're saying the exact macros they're saying are in that meal and that is something to consider because you're going to have different chefs potentially slightly different portion sizes but what it does allow depending on where you are at if you want to track your meals out if your coach wants you to track your meals out you then have an option right you can then socialize and input a ballpark for what you're going to have when you go out and i feel that that is a, a definitely an option for depending on your circumstance for you to be able to stay on track but still go out to eat so that's an option as well on this graduated approach but also for your own learning and understanding of nutrition what i would say is this also allows you to go out and socialize with people outside of bodybuilding and for you to be able to immerse in social occasions without needing to take a tupperware with you without anyone really knowing and i personally felt at that period of time in my life where i was still engaging with more sort of general population people and if there was things that came up i didn't want to be the one to say no all of the time so i could then go out for a meal and be able to input a food a dish and be able to do my own thing and know what i was doing before i got to the restaurant again this can lead to a sense of ease because of course we go into the restaurant and we already know what we're going to have so there isn't this almost anxiety the deliberation what do i do in this scenario and also for me personally it helped me control what i was going to have in regards to not then going oh fuck it i'll have whatever I had in my mind what the dish would be the only drawback that i'll mention here guys is that if you get to the restaurant and they don't have your chosen dish on the menu that can lead to of course what we are not looking to facilitate the anxieties and stress as to what you would then have so this is where i say the education the knowledge and the experience with nutrition in these scenarios will come in clutch because you have options and this is something that i believe we should be offering as coaches so that we don't lead to these scenarios where as athletes as bodybuilders you're like shit what do i do and it's a whole world of stress because you don't know what to do you're so resided over to certain foods certain dishes and that can of course lead to you feeling the stresses over time of 
being in this rigid thought process and the way that you look at food. And this is certainly, again, person dependent. Now, I mentioned at the start, I wanted to touch on social media and also what we consume, because let's face it, guys, we're in 2024. There are nutrition reels. There are influencers. There are YouTube videos. There are never ending conflicting opinions, discussions, options that we can hear about or see and think, well, why aren't I doing that? I want to do that. Is that for me? Well, X athlete is doing this, but that's what I want to do. Why aren't I doing that? Why isn't my coach letting me have X food? And again, that can add to the stresses and anxieties around the plan that you are following. And that's aside from it being food plan or macro, you are still going to end up in your own head if you're consuming things that are affecting you potentially negatively, you're starting to question your own method of tracking. Above all else here, guys, what I would say is, if you are working with a coach in an ideal world, you want to find that coaching fit that enables you to ask questions. Because if you're not sure why you are eating certain foods and does this meal have to be after my workout? Do I have to have this before bed? I don't really like that food. Shit, what do I do? If you don't ask questions, what's that going to lead to? It could lead to a, a number of different things, right? It could lead to you not adhering to your plan. It could lead to you trying to find your own way. And that can affect, of course, your progress, no matter what phase you're in, if your coach doesn't know about that, if you're making macro swaps from your own knowledge and experience, and potentially that knowledge and experience isn't where it needs to be, you could be making swaps for calories, but you may not be hitting the correct macronutrients. Perhaps you're feeling that you can't ask these questions. Maybe you're eating food you don't like or you feel you have a sensitivity to, over time, that can have a backlash on you mentally, but also physiologically. Now, if you can get to a point where you have a coach that you trust wholeheartedly, that you can ask questions, if you're someone that is wanting to educate yourself on this journey, if you can get to that point with a coach where it's such a solid relationship, the coach knows what you're doing. And if something comes up, you have a question, you can answer it. It's fucking epic, guys, if we can get that with our coach, because your learning skills that are going to take you into the rest of your life beyond competing, right? And all of those skills that you learn, if you are able to potentially look at different methods of tracking, if you are using food plans, if you are incorporating days where you do macro tracking or certain meals, we know that we're more adaptive in those emergency scenarios. We know that if we enter into a period of coming away from state for whatever reason, we've got knowledge there, we've got experience there. So being keen to learn, I believe, is something that we should all hold because yes, we can go robotic, guys. Cool. Give me a plan. I'll follow it to the fucking letter. However, what happens if something occurs, if we haven't learned about food along the way? Do we then need to hedonistic approaches? Do we, and this does happen for many, many people, and this is competitors, bodybuilders, normal people trying to change their life, that get a result and this is normally a weight loss result. If we're looking at it from this side of things, you get a result and a year later, you're back to where you started when you embarked on the diet. Or perhaps you put on more weight, lost more body composition than when you even started. So then essentially we go into these yo-yo cycles and that's easily done. And like I say, that's competitors as well, guys. You know, I know people that get to the best shape of their life 
they step on stage it's the biggest achievement of their life and a year later they don't even look like a bodybuilder because has there been work on yourself your scenario your food behaviors your knowledge your expectations the list goes on because it's all well and good being able to follow a plan but what happens after that plan and that's something i think is important to consider because also if you are so worn down by a food plan in a prep and then you're told after your show do whatever you want what's going to happen guys we know what's going to happen when we think logically we all know that guys right we're listening to this we're adults what's going to happen if you compete and then you hit the fuck it button and you do whatever you want for days weeks months however long that is you're going to lose body composition you're going to sway your relationship with food you're going to potentially end up in binge restrict cycles and you may find yourself in a very tough difficult spot mentally and you do not now know how to get back on track and everything you did in that prep scenario or in that diet scenario it's it's gone because you don't know what to do you get to this point of despair where it's like what have i done now if we look at all the methods i've spoken about today and particularly working with a coach and listening to a coach combined with asking questions and telling them how you feel if we get anywhere close to these thoughts and feelings where you've overeaten or you're in a dark place if you have that bond with a coach if you can be honest and if you can be prepared for this the likelihood is that you can get back on track pretty easily and i think for sure for a lot of competitors from what i see from what i hear from what i've experienced that you've done a prep so you think well i've done the prep i deserve to eat i deserve to eat what i want i don't want to follow a fucking plan i need some time out i'm so worn down mentally and physically i want to have the food that i want and I'm going to have to be boring here, guys, but it's something I talk to all of my clients about. And it's something that I personally believe is very, very important when we look at your GI health and your relationship with food. When you come out of that show, your post-show period, you are repopulating your gut with foods that you haven't had for an extended period period of time now if you keep caning it if you keep eating foods that you haven't eaten for months and months and months in a prep guess what maybe you're lucky maybe you're not and maybe you lead to having either sensitivities with food really negative thought processes with food excessive weight gain losing your body composition and you end up with a multitude of things happening with your gut potentially and this is again it can be a bit of a lottery when we look at this perhaps you're someone that's had post-show several times and you cane different foods and then you're all good and you carry on with your growth phase but for a lot of people there's a multitude of things that can happen if we are not careful in this period of time because hedonistically of course we've done the prep, we've worked hard, we've committed to restriction for an elongated period of time. So what is food? What is food related to? It's related to emotions. So you know the stories, guys, and it may be happening to you right now. Your family members, your friends, people that you know, they're buying you foods for after your show. They want to treat you. They want you to feel good. Oh, I know you love this certain chocolate. I know you love these certain baits, whatever it may be. Now, I'm not saying don't have them. Do not get me wrong here, guys. What I will say is I've made mistakes along the way. I've got to points where I think, oh, my God, you know, what do I do to get back on track here? And it's been hard emotionally and physically. And that's why I want to talk about it. What I certainly have found is 
allowing myself to have a nice meal after a show, having a nice time with my loved ones, and then getting back to facilitating structure, keeping certain things from a prep or diet scenario as we move into a reverse out, a health phase, an off season, being able to incorporate foods, but not go overhaul and just eat whatever the fuck we want for days on end, you are able to repopulate your gut with foods and you're able to assess how those foods sit, how those foods feel. Because many of you listening will know what it's like when you go off plan and you have completely different foods to what you're used to and you can even not be able to go to the toilet. Maybe you go to the toilet more. You can get excessive bloating. You can get acid reflux. You can see a skewing of your appetite. You can get a dry mouth. You can get low energy levels. Your sleep is affected. All of these things, when we look at what bodybuilding is in a nutshell, generally speaking, you're facilitating a good variety in your diet. Of course, I've mentioned at the depths of prep, this is harder. You're looking at good protein sources. You're looking at a fiber target. You're looking at being able to have supplementation to complement your intakes. All of these things we look at as a general basis as a bodybuilder. If this all goes out the window when we've come off the back of a diet, we can end up in a world of shit. So these things are important, very, very important. And a listener question that I have is leading to this hedonistic response that we can have. What would be the preference for when you're macro tracking how you lay out your food choices day to day with a mixture of hedonistically chosen foods and or foods that are going to complement health and well-being? Now, again, I, I could do a separate podcast on this, guys, but it's going to relate to all of the things I've touched on. What I would say for anyone that is macro tracking, when you're looking to construct your own food plan, essentially, or your own food intakes, however you want to frame that, when you're in the different phases, you're going to have different allowances, right? So we know in a prep, over time, food goes down, your macro targets go down. When we come out of the diet, the show, whatever that looks like for you, we start to bring food up. And over time, we graduate the food up to a good spot. If you're looking to grow, maybe you're having an extended growth phase, then the food can get pretty high at points. So how do we look at how we construct if we are macro tracking our diet? This falls back to, guys, what is your knowledge around nutrition? What are the foods that you're going to choose when you're entering the different phases? I would say... More so potentially if we're looking at a prep or a diet scenario, and I label it, what is your best bang for your buck? So when I went to a thousand calories a day for 13 weeks, what did I preference? I had micronutrients in every single meal. I went from five meals to four meals so I could have more food each time I ate. And also I could keep busy in between in those blocks in between eating. I would preference good quality protein sources and fat sources. And my whole diet, my whole prep is leaning towards whole foods. Now, when you first start a prep, maybe your calories are still in a good spot. There is more room. There's more wiggle room to be able to include certain things. However, I've found over my experience and over my time if I utilize foods that are more of your, what we would call empty calories. So if I was to utilize my calorie allowance, it's like a bank, a bank um, allowance or credit. If I was to use my numbers, my macro targets on foods like protein bars or a chocolate bar, even, you know, something that is more empty in calories that actually doesn't fill me up, that actually... I would find that one, that would drive more hunger. Two, that also can lead to you wanting more of these foods. 
that's something to think about because in a prep scenario personally i would recommend that you include foods that digest well that you know sit well for you and that you look at and not excessive volume but a good amount of volume each time you eat particularly as you go deeper into the deficit if we can include things like salads veggies when our macros go down if we can look at foods that are going to satiate you enough at points it may be beyond that and you're not looking to facilitate satiation as such because the goal is obviously the stage and we we go over that bridge i mentioned earlier and it's like right okay you know food isn't tasting like it used to but if we can facilitate those whole foods and those foods that digest well in combination with some volume some nice seasoning you know i my preference is salt i love salt <laughs> and i know Gigi will listen to this my client who also loves salt we are the salt sisters but you know seasoning food that can help if you're looking at calorie free items and this is something that is again person dependent and coach dependent something i recommend is two to three over a day if you're using calorie free items using that two to three times over a day so then it doesn't lead into excessive use of calorie free items because again can that lead to certain food behaviors and pathologies can that lead to you wanting more of foods that taste like a sugar-free item yes potentially and are you and this is the question you will need to answer are you relying on sugar-free items to give you a palate experience for you to then be able to find prep more enjoyable and what i would say off the back of that is using stuff like this sparingly in your diet and my personal recommendation two to three times a day if you want to use them but are you just winding yourself up are you having these things to then feel like your diet tastes better and actually, is it better to, at a point in prep, to reside over to, I'll have sugar-free syrups a couple of times a day, I'll salt my foods, and actually, you know, at times this is going to suck, this is going to be pretty hard, I'm not getting every time I eat this amazing palate experience, but guess what your goal is, to get shredded and get on stage, what's more important, right? So this is a thought process that only you will know. If we are using sugar-free items as a crutch for months at a time, I will tell you that this can lead to long-term digestive problems. This can lead to food pathologies. And do we need to spank sugar-free items in all of the phases? Again, that's going to be up to you. That's not for me to tell you what you should and shouldn't do, unless you're a client of mine, but it's a thought process because what we actually get in from those items a couple of times a day two three times a day you look forward to it it's nice you know maybe you have a coffee with a zero calorie in it maybe you have a salad with one of the dressings something like this it can add a little bit in there but ultimately guys a prep at times is going to suck it's going to suck hard and have you got what it takes does it go back to i will do whatever it takes well for a short period of time can you reduce how many sugar-free items you have? Can you suck it up and stick to a food plan of not much food? Can you look at smart ways to construct your food plan or your macronutrient targets and or both to facilitate you being able to get through this prep and come out the other side and then go through into whatever your phase looks like after your prep? So in answer to that question, I would say there are periods of time where hedonistically, for sure, we can include certain foods in our diet. You know, in an off season, maybe we have protein bars, maybe we have chocolate bars, maybe we have breakfast bars, lots of different things that we can incorporate. We can make foods more exciting if we're flexible dieting with a macronutrient approach. Maybe we incorporate some different seasonings. Whatever that looks like for you, the list goes on there. For sure, we can incorporate hedonistic approaches here. 
But what I will say is that if you're having food you really enjoy and you have set targets, just be careful with if you have certain foods that then spark you to want to have more of that food or something else that is related to that meal you have. So I know in the past there'd be certain meals I'd want to have off plan that would then make me want to have to go and have some bakes or whatever. And then you get into these food relationships where if you go and have off plan, always on the way home, you get ice cream and cookies, as an example. Where does that then lead? Do you then get home and you've got some biscuits there? Oh, shit, suddenly calories have gone through the roof and we're out of control. And that's just a little example of if you are including foods that are more hedonistic to understand that if these foods spark something within you, then it's important to either work on that with your coach or understand why. And maybe for periods of time, we don't include that food. Then when we look at the well-being side of the question, should your macro targets and your macro tracking all be geared towards the well-being side? From my standpoint, if you are a bodybuilder in the physique realm, I believe it's important to have a nutrient-rich diet, a diet that offers a diverse range of micronutrients, depending on where you're at, of course, in these phases. As we've already discussed, in a prep, it's going to get harder. But if you are macro tracking in an off-season, you can for sure incorporate a mixture of different whole foods. And what I would say is in regards to this, and this is where I'm going to leave it today, hedonistic choices, where does that come from, first of all? And why do you want to be a bodybuilder? What is it you want to get from this? Do you live and breathe bodybuilding? Do you live and breathe progress? Do you love being the one that tracks and monitors their food, that hits micronutrient targets, that hits macro targets, that doesn't have a problem eating out the Tupperware, that knows that, generally speaking, they're tracking on a macro plan to be able to facilitate a good variety of foods, digestive health, general health and well-being. Are you looking at this as actually hedonistically, I want more of the whole foods or hedonistically, do you want to eat shit? And that again is going to be person dependent. What I would look at is if you are including things like your chocolate bars and, and whatever it is, whatever your choice is, might be that you're more savoury. Can you have X item and then go, I'm fine with that. That's a nice treat. And a bonus tip that I will round up on today and what I would do in off seasons is if I wanted to incorporate a chocolate bar or a protein bar, I would couple that with one of my normal meals and I would have an allowance for that. So an example would be with my bowl of oats. I would have my oats with my protein mixed in and fruit and peanut butter or whatever I'm having there. And then I would have X protein bar, X chocolate bar. And the reason I mentioned this is a bonus tip. If you eat your normal meal and then you have something additional, which is, you know, say a protein bar that's 250 calories, you're already quite full from that meal. If you then have that after, personally, I feel that is a tactic to if you're including hedonistic foods that you enjoy, the likelihood is, like I say, you're quite full from the bowl of oats and whatever you have with it. And then you have a protein bar and you're really satisfied rather than if you're starving hungry and you eat a protein bar. I personally feel like that could lead to you wanting more of those flavors, wanting more of those foods and potentially hitting that fuck it button and going off track. So hope you've enjoyed this episode guys we have till the end of the month to vote for the beyond condition podcast as apple podcast of the year and of course i've had that in the intro for the most recent episode so i appreciate it if you've voted already as always guys my inbox is open on instagram and i mean that every message i get i really do appreciate it even today speaking to carly if you're listening 
thank you for your support of understanding the mission and seeing that and tuning in every week and really enjoying the podcast and all of you guys all of you that i meet and i get the honor to meet in person or on instagram i really do appreciate your support and i will continue bringing you a podcast every week and of course this week you get to thank you guys and i will speak to you real soon hey.